In this video, we discuss global and local variables. It's important you've got a solid understanding of the basic programming concepts and different data types before you watch these videos. We covered those in SLR playlist 8 and 13. Although you could learn the theory independently, it makes much more sense if you're able to work through these videos and their examples by implementing their concepts in real program code. These videos are therefore designed to reinforce and consolidate the understanding of programming techniques you will need for the exam, rather than teach you these concepts from scratch. Remember, the way to become a good programmer is by programming, little and often. You don't become a good programmer simply by watching videos and studying theory. When declaring a variable or a constant, the programmer needs to be aware of its scope. Broadly speaking, scope can be either local or global. A local variable is typically declared inside a subroutine, only accessible by that subroutine, created when the subroutine is called and destroyed when the subroutine ends. A global variable, on the other hand, is typically declared at the top of a program outside of any subroutines, accessible therefore throughout the program, created when the program starts and destroyed when the program ends. Here's the code for part of a console-based Pac-Man game written in Visual Basic. The variables and constants currently highlighted are all global. They sit above and therefore outside the local scope of the two procedures shown. As they're global, they can be seen and accessed by the whole program, including any code inside the initialize high score or get input procedures. We can see that the global variables are fully visible and accessible from inside those procedures. The variables highlighted here are all local. Counter is a local variable of the initialize high scores procedure. Key is a local variable of the get input procedure. As these variables are local, they're created when the procedures are called, can only be used by code inside their procedure, and they're destroyed when the procedures exit. You will notice that two variables can share the same name if they have different scopes. So counter is both a global variable for the entire program and a local variable of the procedure initialize high scores. Here, when the counter variable of initialize high scores is created, it takes precedence over the global counter variable. The code contained within initialize high scores updates the contents of the local version of the counter variable and not the global one. Now this can get quite confusing and potentially dangerous, especially when programs grow very large. Excessive and unnecessary use of global variables can make programs hard to test, debug and maintain. And for this reason, the use of global variables is generally considered poor programming practice. Although there are legitimate and sometimes unavoidable reasons to use global variables, local ones should be used whenever possible. A system of passing in required values to the subroutine via parameters and returning values is considered much safer and thus better programming practice. And we'll look at parameter passing in another video. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is the difference between global and local variables? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? So that's technically all you need to know for your exam. If you've got an extra 30 seconds, we've just got one more bit we'd like to mention. So the way we've defined local and global scope in this video is all you need in your exam. 
However, the reality will vary greatly depending on the programming language you're using. Scope can vary from a single expression to an entire program with multiple levels in between. Modern modular programming allows for what's called separate module scope, where the names are visible within the module but not outside it. Block scope is also common, whereby the scope is restricted to a subset of a given function. Yet another further scope popular in C is known as file scope. So this is another great example in computer science where the reality of the situation is often different to the simple abstracted situation we present to you for your exam.